Psalm 50, verses 1 and verse 5 says, The mighty one, God, the Lord has spoken, and summon the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Verse 5 says, Gather my godly ones to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Well, if you're joining us in reading through this six-month reading plan through the book of Psalms, Today's reading is Psalm 50, the title for, through verse 9, and I encourage you to read that section. Well, this section would be interesting even if you only had the first verse. In this first verse, you see the three names of God, each displaying a different attribute. The rest of the psalm simply amplifies this first verse. Now, the first word that is used here to describe God is translated El, the Mighty One. This is a two-letter word in Hebrew, and many times it's used in conjunction with other words. For example, El Shaddai, Almighty God. Now, as the psalm begins, it begins telling us that God is the Mighty One, and then it begins to set up for us the rest of the psalm. Asaph then uses uh, the second word for God, which is the word Elohim. This word displays God's power in creation and overcreation. Genesis 1.1 states, In the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. So this attribute of God is one of power and creation. It shows us that he stands over all creation. Now the final word that you used here in the first line is the word Jehovah, whose attribute is the covenant-making, promise-keeping God. Now you'll find this word used many times when God is promising something to someone or the country of Judah, for example. In Israel, in Isaiah 3, one, it says that the Lord Jehovah is going to remove Jerusalem and Judah from the ability to exist. This is a covenant, albeit a negative one, which God is making with the nation of Judah because of their sin. So here Asaph is telling the listeners through whom they are being addressed. It is the creator God, the one who has the power to uphold the promises and the covenants that he makes. And then he begins to further describe his power and his attributes. And in verse 5 and 6, he encourages those who are godly to come to him. It is interesting to note that he says that those who are godly have made a covenant with him or by through sacrifice. Yet later in the psalm, he talks about how their sacrifices are insufficient. Now this we'll discuss tomorrow when we finish the psalm. But I'd, I'd like to focus on one final thought as we close out today's devotion. The sacrifice which Asaph describes is not one that we make, is the one that God has made through Christ. We covenant with God through Christ's sacrifice. Our relationship with God is dependent on the sacrifice that was made by Christ. Our judgment by God is through our covenant with him, and it is through Christ. God does not want animal sacrifices. What he wants is a sacrifice of thankfulness. He does not want us to attempt to pay you for our relationship with him. He wants us to repent and place our trust in the work of Christ on the cross. And if you would like a PDF copy of this entire reading plan, please send an email to PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.